I have Jerry and Gautam here from Solutions IQ who would be helping us in this today's session. And uh, I hope, I mean, did any one of you get any intimation to, you know, to carry your diving suits? No? <laughs> okay, don't worry, even if you don't have, it doesn't matter, we'll really explore a lot in this one hour. So what I would be doing in this one hour is I will make you all to really deep dive into this limitless sea of retrospectives which has been one of my interest area for, for a couple of years. Okay, so I'm Madhvi, I'm from Solutions IQ, I'm from Hyderabad and I work as an Agile Consulting Coach for SIQ. Okay, so that's about me and uh, Jerry, would you like to just introduce, okay, so Jerry is our, uh, no, he's a coach and he's Agile Consultant at SIQ, he's a CSC, so he will be helping us in this session too. Okay, so how I have divided this one hour session is, the first 15 minutes, I will be do doing a retrospective surgery where we will talk about the common symptoms, the common smells that we come across while doing the retrospectives and what was my approach of tackling them. And then the remaining 45 minutes, you all would be doing a retrospective surgery wherein I will be giving you some real life examples, scenarios and you will play with it. Okay, so retrospective surgery. Why am I calling it surgery? Any thoughts? Postmortem. Post okay. <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts? Why surgery? Yes, Jeff. Okay. Good. Thank you. So difficult. Good. Okay. So assume. No, you have you know, a patient suffering is with the diabetics and he has a tumor in a hand, okay, and he comes to a doctor. What would a doctor do? Would he directly take him to the operation theater and operate? No, right? What happens if he does that? That might be his last day, right? So what does a doctor do typically? He tries to assess, he tries to do some preliminary investigations, find out the background of that particular person, what are his ailments, get some preliminary information and then he will suggest a suitable surgical procedure that will suit him, right? So that is the same case even in software engineering. When we are working with teams, when we are trying to, you know, use some method or a technique, understanding the background and the context of the teams is very, very important. So we as scrum masters and agile coaches, when we are working with the teams, we need to really understand what is the context, what is the background, what is the situation that we are posed with and then try to use a suitable technique or a method that will actually suit the given scenario. Got it? Okay. Now these are some of the common symptoms or I can say retrospective smells that I have come across while working with the teams. R as in repeated issues pop up, E as in engrossing and engaging discussions are missing. Teams just come. How was the tea? How was the coffee? They just, just go away. Right? And teams are present virtually. Just for the sake of it, they come and they sleep, then they go. Okay. Routine stuff, nothing interests the teams and observably gets boring over time. And I am sure all of you must have encountered similar symptoms. So do you all want to share some other symptoms which you have come across while doing retrospectives with your teams? Maybe one or two pointers? Or exactly the same symptoms, common symptoms. Yes? Correct. So there's no focus. You like basically you don't come up with something solid. You don't conclude on anything. Yeah. It just goes on and on like uh, you know waves. Correct. So time boxing is also very important. And that's an art, art of facilitation which doesn't come in one day. <laughs> okay. So the intent of this workshop is to really make you all think, make you all realize that we can do something different, come up with our own ideas and techniques to make these reflections really lively. So the retro, the definition here which I have put on this slide is the actual, it is the actual key characteristics of an engaging team. Right, is it obvious? Realize where 
you are and where you want to be. Engage the team in fruitful discussions. Team work to build V over I attitude. And you need to really release the power of your inspect and adapt cycles. Openness and transparency, which are the main two pillars of your inspect and adapt cycles. Now, yes, all of us want to change. We, need, we want to do something really innovative or creative. But how do we do that? We need to bring in that small change. Do something different. Break the monotonous. OK, break the usual norms. And try out something different from your end. So continuously, we need to ponder as in, what am I doing tomorrow so that I can achieve better results than today? It's like, you know, we are so much habituated to do the same thing over and over. It's like I have a few fever, and I take the same crocin every time. So what happens over a period of time? Our body gets resistance to that, right? So after a period of time, we change the tablet. So similarly, we need to really break the usual norms and do something different when these meetings, you know, they get boring over a period of time. So these are some of the common techniques. Old is always gold. So these are the crux of it, wherein on top of this, we can always build. Whenever we see that we need to make a change, add a pinch of your salt to make it tasty. Add your own creative and innovative ideas to these basic techniques, you know, to change them. So now, what did I do? I will be sharing how I have used my real life examples and some interesting scenarios that I have come across while doing retrospectives with my teams. OK, so let me start with an interesting experience. What, is, what does that picture show? Yeah, what does that picture show? We're flying a kite, right? So even I was, you know, like we all fly kites on Pongal Eve, the Eve of Pongal Festival. So even I was flying kites. And in the process of that, I have seen a few tangles on the ground which I was easily, easily you know, able to untangle with the help of my kids. But as a flight flew high and high in the sky, it got stuck between the high tension electric wires. So I cannot you know, go really and remove it from there because it's the live current is flowing through them. So I had to take help of sticks and take help of my you know, neighbors to actually remove that kite. So I visualized, I just realized that this situation is very much similar to some of the scenarios that I was actually seeing with my teams. We come across various impediments. Some of them are like, you know, the team level impediments that we can resolve by ourselves. Some of the impediments we really need to escalate it to the next level for resolution. So we'd had a retrospective, you know, after one week of the Pongal festival. So what I did was I just drew a kite picture on the board and I said, now look, this kite is a good work that we have been doing. Identify what are the impediments that we have, what we can resolve by ourselves, and what we really need to escalate it to the next level for resolution. So somehow teams like this method a lot, and they were able to draw a clear line of distinction between the different levels of impediments in an organization. So this, one, this was one of the very interesting experience I had, and it really worked out well with my teams. Yes, the next one. Any guesses what is that real launch? Good, Mangal Yan, right? So this is a picture of a Mangal Yan. It was launched, I think, last September or sometime. To, and it was you know, all set to hit the mass orbiter. And immediately, the next day, actually, we had a retrospective with our team. And the coincidence was Mangal Yan had one year to hit the mass orbiter, whereas our team, we just had one sprint to finish that quarter release. So somehow, I tried to correlate these two. I just went ahead, drew this picture on the board, the rocket picture, and I said, I, uh, it was an affiliate team, so I said, this is our AFYAN. And I said, Mang as Mangalyan is important to India, our AFYAN is very important to our organization. And the correlation is, we have just one week to complete our sprint. Mangalyan has one year. So quickly identify what are the impediments that you have, and what are the driving forces that are helping you to meet your sprint goal. So the teams were really happy with this metaphor, with this comparison, and they really could come up with good data points. So the message here is that whenever you hear or see something live, you can take it back to your teams because they can really correlate to them because they have seen that happening. Got my point? OK. So I'll 
quickly go over the techniques so that we can actually practice them. Yes, this is one. Focus word creates real focus. Now, whenever I wanted my teams to really focus on some aspect, a simple example, I have I was seeing a lot of repeated issues, you know, bugs coming up, technical debt items coming up. So I really wanted the team to focus on quality in one of the retrospectives. So what I did is I just went ahead and added a specific focus quadrant to the normal retrospective technique. So that really helped the team to think about that particular specific accept. So it is like you can customize your existing retrospective, add a specific focus quadrant that really needs the team to focus on. So you can say focus on quality, focus on SEDU ratio, focus on velocity, whatever you want the team to retrospect on. So this also helped a lot. Yes, now what is this? Team journey, any guesses? Sorry, team journey, any guesses? Release planning, okay. <laughs> any other guess, team journey? As a team, we have to win. So basically, the team journey is like we can use this technique or I use this technique whenever the team actually has traveled together, maybe for four or five sprints. It's like you know a combined retrospective of four or five sprints. So the scenario what actually was that I was encountered was I was you know they were, I was working with the organization as a scrum master and a lot of you know structural changes were happening. So suddenly I was moved to a new team made a scrum master of that team and that particular team had already completed four sprints they were entering into the fifth sprint and I saw mixed emotions in the team members one was very happy one was you know, not very happy the other one was you know he doesn't speak at all so I just wanted to understand what is the current as a state so then I just drew a you know train picture on the board and I said you know this is our team train we have traveled traveled together for four sprints now we are entering into the fifth sprint so let us retro retrospect on how our four sprints went. So the concept here is that whenever we use the term journey, the teams can really visualize on how they have actually traveled together. Now it doesn't mean that every time you have to draw a train. If your team you know, likes to fly in a plane, you have a high budget team, you can draw a plane also. So whatever vehicle your team likes, uh, you, know, likes you can just put it there. So team journey, it's like you know, a concept that can be used whenever the teams have completed four or five sprints and you want to retrospect on how that particular journey was. Okay, and this is one of my favorites. I say this is in a mountain trekking. So imagine this person is you know, climbing the mountain and the goal is to reach the top of the mountain. So when he's climbing, we have some slippery slopes here which will bring him down. Some elements like you know, having a helmet, wearing a shoes and ropes will help him reach the mountain goal. And that is the most important, the unique thing in this particular metaphor is the risks part in the form of thunder and rain. So I use this metaphor saying that whenever the team is working on some critical aspect, say you are doing a, you know, changing the underlying architecture, which has a lot of impact, lot of risks can be there because you are changing the underlying architecture and many components could be affected. So this technique can be used wherein you really want the team to retrospect, think of the upcoming risks so that they can mitigate them well while trying to come up with the action items. So this aspect really worked very well for us. Any questions? This is self-explanatory. This is like, you know, highway drive. The team is going on a highway drive and, you know, these are like the signboards that will help the team move ahead and these are like the impediments, the pitches on the road and that is like you know dead, dead, uh, dead end, that is again like a risk. And this is again a very useful thing, it's like you know where is a block in the flow. This can be typically used with Kanban teams wherein you have so many problems, you really want to understand where the problem is in which stage. So what I did was I just drew this diagram and I named the stages that were applicable to the teams and then we try to identify the cloud nine and help points in each of the stages. And so in which, whichever stage we have more help points, that was a problematic stage. So it was very evident, rather than doing a general retrospective. And this is the most famous that we use at SIQ, pain and pleasure, where we try to identify the pain points and the pleasure points and then talk about that. Okay, 
Now we've talked about few techniques. What else can we do to make these <coughs> meetings lively? We should never forget to, appre to appreciate the team members for the good work that they do. Because whenever you give away some smiley badges and thank them, appreciate them in front of everybody, it will have an everlasting impact on the teams. And they will be motivated to do good work. And you can change the style. Instead of having the retrospective in the same room, same uh, office, you can once in a while go out, do a retrospective over coffee talk, over lunch. But in all these cases, your scrum master should keep his radars on, note down a few important points so that he can take it forward. Yes. innovationgames.com it's coming up so these pictures that you have seen here you now all these are the actual retrospective pictures that we have done with the teams and these you now these games are actually online live on innovationgames.com so you can log into this you can, and you can use these so these are again the live the actual pictures that we have tried out with the teams so go to innovationgames.com you have n number of retrospective techniques there so B, suppose your team, two members are in Bangalore, two members are in Hyderabad, one is in Pune. It's very easy and it is very effective. It's on just one click of a button, you can consolidate all the retrospective data in an Excel sheet. Okay. So action plan, which is very important. At the end of retrospective, you really need to come up with the action plan as to how you will work on whatever you have discussed. You can always save the action plan in an Excel sheet or have a visual indicator or radiator like this in your team space. Okay? Now, which technique to use? Any guesses? How will you, which technique to use? Understand your team, understand the context, understand the background, look at the situation, and then use your appropriate technique. Devise your own technique that will really make the teams talk and think. There's no one Liner or you know, it's like this technique only has to be used. There's no single rule like that. Okay, so these are some of the pictures, and you can find the same pictures there. We have put up there, so you can just look at them. And the same games are live on innovationgames.com. You can log on to innovationgames.com and use these games, play these games for distributed teams. Yes. Hmm. So there's one technique there, good to great. Your, your team say good, but what do you really need to become great? See where you are, what is that you're doing? Maybe you're doing good at TDD, but are you really good at the integration part of it across all the features? You need to understand, just discuss with the team. Okay, we are good, I agree, but what is that? What can we do to become great? It's again about discussion. Okay, so now let's get our hands dirty. Okay, let's do the retro retrospectives. So how we will be doing the retrospectives is each table, now we will make five groups. Form five groups. Each one of you will get real life scenarios and at this toolkit of retrospective techniques. So pick one scenario out of them and find out which technique is relevant to that particular scenario and do a retrospective. You get 10 minutes to do the retrospective, then you need to debrief for three minutes what was the scenario? Why did you choose this particular technique to do retrospective for that scenario? So I'll give you post-its, scenarios, and all these. So once you tell which scenario and which tool, which technique you have picked, I'll give you charts for this. It's not, it, these are actual games on innovationgames.com. These are online games. Huh? How long did you take to run them? These are very quick. It, you can, I mean, I can give an example. Last retrospective, I've just finished in 20 minutes. Because it's like online, everyone will type from different locations. And on just one click of an Excel button, see here you have an Excel uh, click, right? So on one click of an, click of a, of an Excel button, you get all the data correlated. So it's, yes. In a room normal, not more than an hour. Okay, so uh, Jerry, I think we need to distribute those. So shall we make five teams? So one table here, second, third, fourth, and fifth. 
five teams post it through our sketch so this is one table over here second where is the second table maybe you can just join third you know at least one action item yes so let us know which technique you are picking so that we will give you and please raise your hands when you are ready with the scenario and technique so that we can give you the appropriate charts no sitting they will choose one corner they'll stick a chart and they will do it ha help just stop them and help just pick one and there's some keywords which will help you do it so just have 10 minutes because then we'll end with a game so and tumre ke scenario picture someone do it fast this is not for individual this is just Every, everything is for a team So which which technique did you pick up and which scenario? <laughs> Fast. You don't have time. Ha. There is no idea there is any like or what is the movie one? Which were you okay? So that they really need to focus on Oscar nomination. Focus. Say you me love you. started the retrospectives you just have five more minutes to complete your retrospectives no but it's the same thing right what you are watching seeing the same is just how you're pasting whatever you're drawing sorry come over here we'll have two teams debrief and then we'll end with an interesting game okay we'll start your journey of retrospectives with your with an interesting game so come forward we'll first hear this team debrief and then this team so all of you please come forward come this side we'll have this team debrief so all of you can listen come yeah come forward so which so you want to debrief first so please use the mic yeah, yeah. So, you explain what scenario why you have picked up this technique and one action item top most action item that you have come out okay why so uh, we've chosen why this? hindi movies don't generally get nominated and that line um, so we felt that uh, trekking was the right criteria because it had risks uh, it had blockers and it had uh, enablers okay. so we felt that uh, this would suit our cat uh, our criteria in uh, helping why hindi movies should get nominated for oscars so uh, you want to pick all of them talk about all of them yeah you can just quickly give an overview of what you okay so what we felt blockers are uh, stupid rules uh, more of commercial highly illogical no good storyline uh, too much masala and too lengthy okay <laughs> driving for less enablers 
uh, we have not experimental, uh, good music, uh, real world stories, latest technologies, uh, have the Hindi movie in English as well, so a uh, lot of people would love it. Uh, okay, um, acquired taste, so we feel that people who like Hindi movies have an acquired taste. Thanks. Not every English person can like Hindi movie, so promote uh, more and more of Hindi movie. Uh, sprint goal, uh, audience taste, uh, underworld involvement and black money, uh, <laughs> losing on revenue. Okay. Risks. So I think uh, that's from our team. So how do you feel, you know, using such techniques? So I think. I mean, uh, were you able to relate this scenario with this, you know, technique? Was it helpful? Uh, it was useful, but if I were to connect this scenario to my real. Uh, work scenario, mm. I've always feel that in retrospective, we come out with solid and awesome points. Mm. Uh, from my three years experience, I can tell you that we've never gone back. So this week retrospection, we've had action items, but we've never bothered checking whether those action items were completed or not. So a very important point to note down is whenever we are starting a retrospective for the current sprint, revisit the previous sprint action items to check whether we have really acted upon them or not. If not, Consider whether you really need to again reconsider them in the sprint or not. Yeah. That means you are inspecting but not adopting. Yeah. So I'm having the suggestion over there to like while uh, what we are doing this retrospective happened at the end of the sprint. Correct. So while doing the planning, at the end of the planning meeting, once we complete the planning, we revisit the retrospective action items so that the team will understand like what are the mistakes they have made last year <coughs> and immediately improve Improve it. Yeah. And yeah. Also for the yes, that also we can do. So Thank you. Put some radiation back. Yes. So, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yes. So, thank you. Next team, yeah, you want? Would like to debrief? Yes. So, you have to explain what was the scenario and why did you pick this technique? How did it help you? Yes. Our team members. Uh, yeah, maybe the the entire uh, team can be here. Uh, we have uh, chosen the uh, case study number one. Uh, India has come to semi-finals in the World Cup. Okay, uh, for that uh, we have uh, uh, selected uh, this uh, good to great uh, technique. Uh, as a team, as a team, okay. we uh, uh, selected. Uh, we felt that uh, this is the best technique which will be adopted. So the team is really good, but you wanted to you know become yeah, great by great. winning the World Cup. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So. Uh, we came up, like currently, why it's good? Uh, we came up with some of the points, like uh, uh, it's good because of the team effort mm -hmm. and uh, team co coordination and uh, good uh, teamwork by all the team members. Uh, and currently, it's in good form. Mm -hmm. And uh, bowlers did a fantastic job and took, uh, in all, almost all the matches, they took all complete 10 wickets. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the reasons for the current uh, good situation. Okay. And how it can be, uh, it can be a great team. It's like uh, bowlers should be consistent in getting more wickets. Uh, all the bowlers, when I say. Okay. And uh, team-wise, uh, we have to make uh, uh, some more smart uh, test strategy, a uh, team strategy, sorry. Okay. And uh, consistent uh, play. Um, need and uh, it requires uh, some reorg uh, within the team. And refactoring. Okay. Refactoring, okay. <laughs> okay. And again, like uh, there are some inconsistency in uh, batting order that has okay. to be taken care. Okay. If these uh, things are taken care, then India will become a great. Team. Good, thank we you. Know, yesterday we have seen, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Now the note is he has uh, he has forgot one point. This exercise we have done day before yesterday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So one more team will get a chance to debrief. Then we'll move on because we need to you know do an important game. Yes. So sh maybe you can you want to debrief. So make it quick. Two minutes debrief because we'll give two minutes and two minutes will wind up. Because we have a good game to play, we'll end the session with the game. Okay, so it is the same uh, tracking uh, thing which we have taken up and uh, the scenario what we have taken is the uh, uh, Oscar award, uh, why the Indian movies are not being selected for the Oscar award. So okay. we have the, the uh, give goal. Give a quick overview. Don't go each yeah, post sure, it. Yeah. Sure. So we have uh, categorized the blockers, uh, enablers, and the risk, and the what is the goal. Mm. So among the blockers, what we have uh, uh, we have uh, notified is the lack of ma marketing. 
and the subject line and the budget budget is not that and i have to go for the indian movies to that great mm. and uh, so we have uh, uh, for the, as an enablers we need some of the we felt that the international recognized uh, musicians or any players mm. so which are international recognized people are needed and more of a collaboration between the production houses or any of kind so that will give that will be an enabler for us and the story no no copycats so mm. that is what uh, that is the main thing and the talent grooming so uh, talent grooming is one of the enablers which will help us to grow and international uh, uh, international stats yeah international recognized uh, you yeah, recognized productions uh, across for all production music everything so that will help us to move so um, and how did you find this technique was it useful i mean did you f see any difference in the way you were doing retrospectives yeah. you know till now and the uh, way you have done now uh, we like this technique very much because best part was the risk part because as soon as we saw that risk, it, yes. it automatically like triggers, uh, yes. triggers to us and blockers and enablers those were the two direct uh, strategy what we got from here so it doesn't take much time for us to realize think. like think. think what we can do what we can't yes. so we have a straightforward thing and we can easily think upon so awesome technique i would yeah. say that so the intent of this workshop is also to let you all know that these five are not prescriptive techniques you can just go and you know s just look at the situation like look at the scenario that you are posed with come up with your own technique that you can you know relate to it that will help a lot okay uh, just yeah. one one more point is uh, i tried with one another technique called the one word play huh? one word game so where uh, just to not to bore the team mm -hmm. so we tried with one word uh, where uh, for the last sprint what how would you express that sprint to be in a one word that mm -hmm. that was really fun okay. because we were not able to think it in one word one so word we about yeah, one word of how you feel so that okay. that will Good. that is just for fun thank you thanks thank for you. sharing yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So this last team. Yeah. Hi, folks. My Keep name is Arun Kumar. Yeah. Uh, we have chosen uh, what is currently visible in Indian market, where you know you have the uh, online stores which are killing into the so your one, okay? physical stores. Yeah. Okay. That is what we have taken. Huh. So we try to you know uh, get the enablers. Uh, blockers risk and all being sorted out so the key blockers which we could find is one is you know you have this instant buying experience from your mobile and we had a recent example of my friend who bought instantly because he got an offer over his uh, mobile phone as an you know from a, as an app right and then you have you know prices are very competitive from an online perspective because they don't have a physical store so uh, some of those things are there and uh, the enablers which we try to do to you know increase the footfall uh, one of them is most important is quality of service if somebody is visiting the store he should feel a good experience of you know how he has got the product out the other thing is you know uh, you have the allied services which is where it is a unique thing because if you are a what you call a clothing giant and you know and you have a tailor with you who can you know customize then and there while you are you know shopping it is experience which cannot be given by the physical uh, online store uh, you have a family experience, so you know when somebody is going, like you know, on all the big malls, so you have an experience for your children, for your wife, son, kids, everybody. So there's a, it's becomes a journey rather than you know just a buying experience. And you know, uh, and you can obviously you know uh, try to do a cross what you call uh, selling of your offers. So you have both online offers on the on the competitors' website, wh as well as you know you have the offline offers in physical store. The risk is, you know, you that you might have to maintain big inventories, thinking that you know, big based on this um, whole business oh case, you might have to put in a lot of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, goods into place, which cannot may or may not be, you know, in a good use. And uh, uh, other risk is obviously, you know, you will have other uh, competition, you know, which are killing again back into it, and so you can have a redu reduction in margins going over and over again. So those are a couple of things uh, which so we try to focus on. How did you f find this new technique? I mean, did you find it useful? What is the difference that you found? Yeah, so I think. Does uh, this trigger, trigger, trigger? You know, some kind of thought process in you. you know, yeah, I think it gives you clarity of thinking uh, yeah. on different lines. Uh, mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you know, you keep jumbling and you have to keep some some track. Mm -hmm. Here, it is giving you a track easily. You can, you know. So you're building a storyline. Yeah, you are yeah. building this a storyline. You can, as you put uh, something in one side, you can always look at how the other side can be, you know, uh, worked around, right? Because the whole, whole problem as, as a journey. journey what yes. You wear, what you are, what yes. You yes. So exactly the intent of this workshop is also the same thing. You need to build, come up with your own storylines depending upon the situation you are in. That will help you a lot to retrospect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let us start your retrospective journey, you know, your deep dive journey from tomorrow by, you know, playing a small game. So what is this? The Titanic, right? What is happening to that? It is sinking, right? So now. 
what is this picture we you know the game is sink the titanic okay think about one pointer one point that you can actually do you would like to do so that you actually sink the titanic maybe all of you can just come up with one point we are playing the game this game is called sink the titanic okay all of you need to give me at least one point that will make this sinking titanic sink, sink instantaneously even more faster throw a notion over it yes put a grenade, put a grenade. good bomb. Bomb. bomb any other thoughts quick tidal wave, tidal wave. Tsunami. good tsunami any other thoughts huh what what is uh, yes you are still telling something okay now let's look at what happened here look at this pic so it's you know really cool you have given me such thoughts that the entire boat has just you know sunk in minutes ideally it would have taken maybe one hour but with your thoughts powerful thoughts it was really you know pretty quick so great job appreciate okay no 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 okay now can you now that you have expressed all your negative thoughts out you know can you think about one point wherein you really can you know make save the ship it's like you're inverting the game that we just played so <laughs> yes as a team iceberg <laughs> okay so i mean <coughs> good so the main intent behind this game is now this actually this is actually called as a tris it's one of the popular retrospective game that is used at solutions iq it is called tris so what we are doing here is we are first trying to express all our negative thoughts so once all our negative thoughts are out now we know what we should not do in order to make your project a success so we have recently we very often use this technique with our customers so recently we had a problem wherein you know there were a lot of problems around the product backlog the product owner had so many problems user stories had so many problems we were trying to use different techniques nothing worked then we used tris using tris first what did the team do they killed the product backlog now they know how to kill it right so now to invert it it just took seconds for them to you know come up with thoughts so this is a very powerful technique which solution iq uses most commonly with all its customers just try it around it's very good so that's all <coughs> to summarize it's like you know don't try to experiment too many things first understand your team get the context understand the background try the plain vanilla first use a good old techniques first then when you see you know that it has become habitual the teams are losing interest you add your own flavor to it as a teams how do you want to do your retrospectives it's like you know you go to taj tri star seven times your kids get bored they say okay let us go to some other new hotel so try that new hotel you like it you do you know stick it to for to it for some more time then you hear that something else is good then you go there so take a buy in from the team which technique do we use what to do then you know retrospect so in short there's no one line answer you know to say that okay this is the best technique or this is the best way to make your ret retrospectives effective it's all about inspecting and adapting talking to your teams and coming to a collective path so, so what are the techniques you do for a very young team who are not you know sort of opening up young team start with a good old basics esther derby book okay and then once you understand the intent of the retrospective then you you know try to add your own flavor tweak it a little bit to make it more interesting try different things because without understanding the basic intent of retrospective you just you know draw a picture do something very complex it becomes even more complicated yes so i hope this session was useful so again the intent is not to say that you no know, these those six techniques what i've put there they are the prescriptive techniques no look at your scenario look at the situation that you are in build a storyline around that so that you can really think and act so we have three more minutes for q and a if you have any questions you know we can always discuss 
and you have a copy of the retrospectives, uh, retrospectives book, you can you know take it with you. On the tape, there is a copy of the book on each and every table, so you can just take it if you are interested. It is there. So, you have any questions? We are open. Thank you.